Now that you're more comfortable with iterables, iterators, and how they work, we're going to check out a particular use case that is pertinent to the world of data science, dealing with large amounts of data. Let's say that you're pulling data from a file, database, or API, and there's just so much of it, just so much data, that you can't hold it in memory. One solution is to load the data in chunks, perform the desired operation or operations on each chunk, store the result, discard the chunk, and then load the next chunk of data. This sounds like a place where an iterator could be useful. To surmount this challenge, we are going to use the pandas function, read CSV, which provides a wonderful option whereby you can load data in chunks and iterate over them. All we need to do is to specify the chunk using the argument, yep, you guessed it, chunk size. As with much of what we do in data science, this is best illustrated by an example. Let's say that we have a CSV with a column called x, containing numbers, and I want to compute the sum of all the numbers in that column. However, the file is just too large to store in memory. We first import pandas and then initialize an empty list result to hold the result of each iteration. We then use the read CSV function, utilizing the argument chunk size, setting it to the size of the chunks I want to read in. In this example, we use a chunk size of 1000. You can play around with this. The object created by read CSV is an iterable, so I can iterate over it using a for loop in which each chunk will be a data frame. Within the for loop, that is, on each iteration, we can compute the sum of the column of interest and we append it to the list result. Once this is executed, we can take the sum of the list result and this gives us our total sum of the column of interest. Iterators to the rescue. Also note that we need not have used a list to store each result. We could have initialized total to zero before iterating over the file and added each sum during the iteration procedure, as you see here. Now things get really cool. You're going to use an iterator to load Twitter data in chunks and perform a similar computation that you did in the prequel to this course. Then you're going to write a function that does the same. Happy iterating, friend.